I say at first we'll think, we'll look at the lesson and the curriculum and decide what the kids need to learn. And then one of us will come up with one idea and then we just sort of start bouncing it off each other and kind of go from there. What do you think? Um, yeah, and then just kind of troubleshoot ideas, brainstorm what could go wrong, what we think will really work. Maybe one of us has had an experience teaching um, the concept before and we might share that and then just kind of go from there and brainstorm the best ideas that we can come up with. Yeah, and then if one of us has learned about a different technology that might make it easier or the kids more engaged, then we try and kind of incorporate that and see if it'll work in the lesson plan. So. So it's just nice to have another person to ask questions or if something goes wrong, maybe they have um, a different resource to use. Yeah, and I think even just within the classroom, having more than one teacher, um, it's just really helpful because if one, if one student has a question, there's the chance that 10 students are gonna have the same question. So it's kind of nice where um, kind of divide and conquer and she'll go to one half and I'll go to the other half and we'll walk around, okay, make sure that you have this done and this is the email that you're going to send it to and um, it's just kind of nice so that everything's under control rather than um, having just one um, teacher to run around and focus on it and I think it kind of gives us, gives us the confidence to do the these big projects because otherwise it would seem like a daunting task I feel like mm -hmm. to do it alone if you didn't have any other um, collaborative help so I think that we plan it so we both completely understand the lesson and a lot of the times we'll say, okay, you do the introduction, I'll do the lesson or the first part of the lesson, mm -hmm. and you do the next activity, um, and then just kind of bounce um, those roles back and forth so we could both completely teach the whole part or the whole section of the lesson. Um, but we usually plan out before mm -hmm. who's going to talk about what just for flow. And and then I'd say when we're, when one of us is not in the main facilitator of the lesson, the other person's walking around, uh, making checking for student understanding, and if there's behavior issues, the other one's doing behavior management, um, really working with kids that we know struggle with paying attention, having their eyes on the speaker, and really just making sure that the most kids possible are focused and paying attention to the lesson. For our poetry today, we kind of looked at different apps that the kids could um, put their poems into and had to find one where they could record their voices and then just kind of played around with which ones were easy to uh, flow to the next poem so that we could do it quickly and not have to go in and out of different applications or pages. It was a lot of steps but the kids were constantly engaged in it and excited about it and they kept hearing, oh, you're gonna get to do a celebration. And so they were excited about it always. But I think it was, like you said, really crucial because she was able to teach the majority of the students um, the lesson. So no, it wasn't completely just stop and focus on only um, this portion of the project. So that really um, cut down on time having us both here to do that. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, Mrs. Topps classroom did the same thing. So we did the read, write, think theme poems and um, I did it and I told her that it went great. And then she came back and she's like, basically read my mind or had the same exact experience and was commenting on how engaged and quiet <laughs> the class was. They loved it. I mean, they just thought it was so special and you know, just a fun way to show off their work. We do post. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like next time we are not going to do that. Or <laughs> yeah. that works really well. Um, you know, we could just think about what we could try to yeah. make it better for the and, next time. And, and a lot of the lessons are repetitive lessons where um, it's different concepts, but it's the same idea. And so we'll be like, oh, when we do this tomorrow, we can tweak it this way, or we should do that again. The kids were really engaged. They were all paying attention. And I would say start small. You know, it's, <laughs> I'm so glad I took this class because I was kind of, I was probably that teacher. Now I can give myself my own advice, but <laughs> um, it's fun. And it's so much more engaging than what I was doing before. And I, I'm doing it at a pace that I feel comfortable and it's really benefiting my class and my students. I would say just 
make sure that you're giving them the opportunity because originally I thought with the Plickers app, I was not sure if they were gonna be able to handle it, handle using the card, understand how to do it. And they've done phenomenal with it. They love it. They want more questions on there mm -hmm. and they get excited. Um, I would I always tend to underestimate, so I would say just make sure like you're giving them a chance to show you what they can do.